In this video, I'm going to be repairing this 15 inch mid 2012 Retina Apple MacBook Pro. Now, I actually got this machine off eBay recently uh, for only $130. And uh, yeah, that is quite a good deal for one of these machines. Now, of course, the machine was sold as is, not working. Um, however, when I did initially get it, it worked sort of. It sort of worked. And what I mean by that is the screen originally was cracked. I actually ended up getting a new screen, which, as you can see, has some really bad stain gate. Let's see if I can get that in, the better, in uh, some better light here. But yeah, you can see it has uh, some pretty bad stain gate on there. And uh, yeah, this display assembly only cost me $70. So, you know, for, for this machine, uh, it was still a pretty good deal, uh, including the $130 I paid for the machine itself. Now, the other issue this machine has is a problem with the dedicated graphic circuitry. And what I mean by that is sometimes when you turn the machine on, it shows uh, an image on the screen, it works normally. However, other times it will sh not show any image, it won't show a backlight either, but it will chime and it will actually boot an OS in the background. Now, sometimes when it does turn on, um, I can begin to boot an OS, but as soon as it uh, almost finishes booting, it just shuts off and uh, the system reboots uh, back to a no screen situation. So um, I'll go ahead and power it on here and show you what I mean. So it, it does have a charged battery, of course, so I'll go ahead and turn it on. All right, so you can see the machine chimes there, but there is no video on the screen. Um, and the display backlight is not on, as you can see. So, um, yeah. So, sometimes I can get this to turn on, at least momentarily, by unplugging and plugging back in the battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that real quick and see if I can actually get uh, the display to come on at all, or uh, we might just have to proceed with the process of actually repairing the problem with the board. Uh, but yeah, let me go ahead and resume the video and see if I can actually get it to turn on real quick. All right, so I unplugged and plugged back in the battery quite a few times actually, and I uh, also tried, you know, turning it on only with the power connector, and uh, it didn't work either way. I could not get it to display any video anymore. Um, so yeah, that basically confirms my suspicion that uh, it has the problem that it does, which I will explain uh, once we uh, open up the schematic and get the board removed and take a look at it. Uh, but yeah, for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble the machine and uh, then we'll begin the process of repairing it. And uh, yeah, hopefully after I finish the repair on this board, uh, we should get a fully working machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the logic board and resume the video once the board has been removed. All right, so as you can see, I've gotten the machine or the uh, logic board out of the system. Um, and I have already done a little bit of testing on it and it turns out that the machine is getting no CPU or GPU V core, which is what I expected uh, given the symptoms here. Um, so if we go ahead and take a look at the schematic here, um, the IC responsible for uh, GPU V core is this ISL 62882C. Uh, it is a U8900 on the schematic. And it takes a 12 volt and a 5 volt input, both of which are present. And it gives out the uh, PPV core SOGFX regulated. So um, I believe that should be somewhere around like one point something volts and it is giving uh, zero volts right now. So um, something is definitely wrong there. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is I'm gonna go ahead and replace U8900. Um, I believe that's gonna fix the problem. Uh, given the research I've already done uh, of this problem and the tests that I've performed. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and replace this IC from uh, with one from another logic board, and then we'll go ahead and test it once again and see if we are getting a GPU V core once again. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my camera in the tripod and begin the process of soldering on a new chip. All right, so I've gotten our donor board up here and we are now ready to begin removing uh, the chip that we need for the other board. Now the chip that we're going to be removing is this chip right here, which is also an ISL 6, uh, 62882, and uh, that is the chip that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my hot air station, and then we will begin the process of removing the chip from the board. So we go ahead and warm it up. And while 
while that's warming up, we'll go ahead and apply some flux to the board. I've got a decent amount of flux applied here. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and take my hot air uh, rework station here and we will begin removing the chip. Alright, so as you can see, I've gotten the chip off of the board. Um, so now what we're going to go ahead and do is get the other board back up here and replace the chip that's on that one. So I'm going to go ahead and get that board up and we will begin the process of replacing the chip. Alright, so I've gotten the RetinaLogic board back up here and the uh, chip we're going to be replacing is this one right here. Um, so of course I'll go ahead and start by applying some flux to it. And now we can go ahead and begin desoldering it. Alright, so you can see I have removed the IC, um, so now we will go ahead and apply the new IC. So I'm going to start with a little bit more flux here, grab our new chip, and position it on the board, and then heat it up. Alright, so the new chip is now soldered in place, so now we can go ahead and plug in the board, test it, and see if we now have GPU vCore. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and resume the video and uh, show you the results, so I'll be right back. Alright, so I've now gotten the board ready to test, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it in here, and then we will measure a capacitor, which is right there, uh, where GPU vCore is supposed to be. So go ahead and plug that in. All right, you can see the fan right here has begun spinning. So we will go ahead and measure the voltage on that capacitor. And look at that, we are getting 0.9 volts, which is exactly where it should be, or around the general voltage that it should have on that rail. So 
I'm going to go ahead and clean up all the flux off the board, um, and then we'll go ahead and reassemble the machine and give it another test. And uh, by the way, uh, before I did this repair, or before I replaced the IC, uh, GPU vCore had no voltage on it at all, as I had mentioned before. Um, it had exactly uh, zero volts, and there was no, uh, not even any slight uh, voltage on that rail. So I'm pretty confident that replacing that chip did fix the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and clean all the flux, like I said, and then we will go ahead and give it a full test. So I'll be right back. Alright, so I've gotten the logic board fully reinstalled into this chassis. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is turn it on and see if it works. Now I have connected a hard drive here, so if it does turn on, we'll have something to boot from. Uh, so here we go. And look at that, we have a video signal. So let's go ahead and wait for the option menu to appear here. And it detects the hard disk I have installed, so we'll go ahead and boot off of it. All right, look at that, the machine is booting. So I'm gonna go ahead and resume the video once the system starts up from the drive, and uh, we'll see if it works. Now, when I tested, uh, when the display uh, intermittently worked uh, previously to this repair, um, it would actually start booting an OS, but usually uh, it would shut off like mid-boot or when it was about to enter the uh, user interface. So uh, hopefully that won't happen this time. Uh, it shouldn't since I replaced the IC that was causing the issue. So uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and resume the video once it starts up. All right, so as you can see, the machine did successfully boot up. Um, it did not uh, crash or restart during the boot up process like it was before. Um, and here are the system specs. Now, as you can see, it is running off the Intel HD graphics right now. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, force it to switch to the dedicated graphics card um, so we can make sure that works as intended. So you can go into Energy Saver, uncheck Automatic Graphics Switching. I saw the mouse cursor blink. And there we go. It is now running off NVIDIA GeForce GT 650M graphics. And as you can see, it is working perfectly fine. All the animations are smooth like they should be. Um, and everything looks perfectly working. So that has been the repair of this 15-inch mid-2012 Retina MacBook Pro. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video.